Giving meaning to the constricted visual field can be a frustrating diagnostic exercise. Here are some ideas. There are seven causes. Sometimes the constriction pattern alone will tell you the cause, but often you are going to need more information about the patient. To make matters simpler, let us rely chiefly on the grayscale plots. Number one, these are the edge defects of improper testing procedure. This common form of visual field constriction consists of high thresholds around the rim of the field. The defects are usually due to an improper lens correction or remote positioning of that correction. I suggest you redo the visual fields, making sure that you have fixed these technical problems. Number two reduced palpebral fissure height. This is often blamed, but rarely the answer. The defects are limited to the upper edge of the visual field. They may be caused by ptosis, which is a droopy upper lid, or dermatochelasis, which is redundant eyelid skin overhanging the lid margin and acting like an awning. If you think that these are the problems, tape the lid up. See how that made the defect disappear. But do not blame defects limited to the lower edge of the visual field on an elevated lower lid. It just does not happen. Number three, these are the constricted visual fields of inattention. They were generated by a patient with Alzheimer's disease. She did not attend to stimuli presented at the edge of the test field why not? Because dementia interferes with engagement and also disengagement of attention. Cognitively impaired patients may be so visually consumed by a target at fixation that they do not always notice visual targets in their peripheral field. If you subject cognitively challenged patients to formal visual field testing, expect to get this type of response. Number four. These are the constricted visual fields of extensive optic neuropathy. Is there a clue in this defect pattern? Yes, there is, but it is subtle. Notice that there's a big difference in visual thresholds between a portion of the field above and below the horizontal meridian in the nasal field. This phenomenon is present in both eyes. This is called a nasal step. You can confirm this nasal step by looking at the difference in thresholds across the horizontal meridian on the raw data. It occurs because optic nerve disease affects upper and lower arcuate bundles independently and asymmetrically. You are looking at superior and inferior arcuate bundle defects with sparing of the maculopapular bundle. These defects are especially common in ischemic optic neuropathy, open angle glaucoma, and long-standing papilledema. Number five, these are the bilateral homonymous hemianopias of visual cortex lesions on both sides. How would you know? First, the defects in the right and left hemifields in the two eyes are superimposable. Second, there is a vertical threshold step-off across the vertical fixational meridian. This step-off is similar to the nasal step along the nasal horizontal meridian that you encountered with optic nerve disease. Here it is splayed across the vertical meridian. These are bilateral homonymous hemianopias with macular sparing produced by bilateral primary visual cortex lesions. The macular sparing, most evident here in the left hemifield, occurred because the lesions did not damage the posterior portions of the right visual cortex. This MRI, which shows the encephalomalacia of old strokes, shows that sparing. Remember that the central degrees of the visual field correspond to the entire posterior half of visual cortex. This expanded representation of the visual field onto posterior visual cortex is called the magnification factor. It testifies to the importance of central vision in mammals. Number six, these are the ring defects of retinitis pigmentosa, a genetic disorder of the retinal photoreceptors and retinal pigment epithelium. 
Study the shape of these defects carefully. They do not show nasal steps across the horizontal meridian as would occur with arcuate nerve fiber bundle defects of optic nerve disease. They do not show step-offs along the vertical meridian as befits bilateral homonymous hemianopias from visual cortex disease. These defects cross the horizontal and vertical meridian smoothly. Actually, they have the shape of an incomplete ring, reflecting the vulnerability of the equatorial retina in this condition. Goldman perimetry, which tests the peripheral visual field better than static perimetry, might be helpful in showing that the extreme peripheral field is at least partially spared. This patient's optic fundus showed attenuation of retinal arterioles and scattered black pigment deposits, which testify to damaged retinal pigment epithelium. Other retinal disorders, like panretinal photocoagulation and retinal detachment, might also cause constricted visual fields, but usually without such discrete ring defects. Retinal lesions in those conditions would be even more obvious on ophthalmoscopy. Number seven. Last of all, and worst of all, these are the constricted fields of deliberate non-cooperation. How would you know that these defects are of psychogenic origin? You would not, not without further testing. You could repeat the same static visual field test to look for consistency, but you might get the same result. I suggest you switch to finger confrontation, which would allow you to perform the tunnel funnel test. Here's how that works. You will assess the outer border of the patient's visual field first at one third meter distance and then at five meters distance by moving your finger from outside inward and asking the patient to signal first awareness of it. When the visual field is normal, the borders will naturally expand as you go from the third meter to the five meter testing distance. If a lesion is causing the constriction, the borders should also expand as you test farther away, although they will be relatively constricted compared to the borders of the normal visual field. That expansion is called the funnel field of organic visual field constriction. But if the visual field constriction is faked, the borders will not expand as the testing distance increases because the patient assumes that those borders will not expand. That would be the tunnel field of psychogenic visual field constriction. Sometimes patients with deliberate non-cooperation will perversely report that their visual field actually contracts as you display fingers farther away. I refer to that phenomenon as the reverse funnel field, always a sign of psychogenic visual field constriction. If you are still unsure after these maneuvers, you will struggle to rule out organic causes by ophthalmoscopy and tests of retinal and retrobulbar visual pathway structure and function. Of course, you could always consult a neuro-ophthalmologist. Who knows what that expert might do? Enter now the kind of patient you've been waiting for. Well, Mrs. Lowenstein, when did you lose your sight? Well, I think it was about six weeks ago. It started getting bad, and then it just it went completely. Yeah, can you tell which way my hand is going? No. Okay, well, if I hold my finger right up in front of your eye, can you see how many there are? I, I think that's, that's one finger. I want you to tell me when you can first see my finger, okay? All right, I, I certainly hope you can help me, doctor. All right, okay, just pay attention now. As soon as you see my finger. Now. Good. Okay. As soon as you see my finger. Now. Mrs. Lowenstein, I want to see how quick your reflexes are. I want you to grab my finger as soon as you can see it. Try to grab it. Okay. Grab I'll, it quickly. I'll try. Okay. All right. Grab my finger. Now, just find my finger and grab it's it. It's very, very hard to see. Okay. Well, grab it. Grab it in. That's it. Good. Okay. Put your hand down. Now hold your hand down until you see the finger, and as soon as you see the finger, grab it. Okay, grab my finger. Good. Okay, quicker. I think you can do it faster than that. This is a test of how fast you are. Okay, good. Okay, put your hand down. That's better. That's better. Okay, I know you're, you're fast. I, there's nothing wrong with your reflexes. Go ahead, quickly. That's it. Put your hand down. Grab it. Okay, put your hand down. Grab it. Put your hand down. 
If you can see my finger, I want you to say yes. Okay. Are you ready? Uh, I'm okay. ready. Okay, all right. Yes. 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 No.